The entire history of the development of life on Earth is a series of evolutionary explosions and mass extinctions. After some of them, life began its revival almost from scratch. The largest extinction at the moment is considered to be the cataclysm that occurred at the border of the Permian and Triassic periods. Today, we will talk about the causes and consequences of this gigantic environmental disaster. The videos published on the Age of Dinosaurs channel tell about the appearance and disappearance of a wide variety of living organisms. By subscribing to it, you can be the first to know when new videos are released. Your likes and comments will help make our videos more interesting. Also, thanks to the activity of subscribers, more viewers will be able to see them. According to researchers, approximately 90% of marine and 70% of land species disappeared over a relatively short period of time. Some of them were unique and had features that were not characteristic of subsequent species of living beings. But this great extinction event in the history of our planet has also had some positive aspects. The disappearance of animals at the end of the Permian period became a chance for the development of other groups of living organisms. This primarily affected dinosaurs and other reptiles. For the next 185 million years, it was they who became the masters of the globe. But in the shadow of these giant lizards, the first mammals arose and began to develop. This later led to the emergence of such a creature as man. The cause of the extinction as in other similar cases, was a sharp change in the planetary climate. Most of the inhabitants of Earth simply could not adapt to the new living conditions. But the debate about what triggered climate change continues to rage in the scientific community to this day. If the reason for the extinction of dinosaurs 66 million years ago is visible to the naked eye, it looks like a huge asteroid crater in the Gulf of Mexico. Scientists have not yet found traces of a collision between the Earth and any similar object on the border of the Permian and Triassic periods. Therefore, over the past decades, several theories have been put forward related to the causes of the Permian extinction. Some scientists believed that climate changes at that time were associated with the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea. The appearance of such a large formation changed the topography of the seabed and affected the overall depth of the world's oceans. Also, many researchers note a sharp decrease in oxygen levels in the seas and oceans of that period. Both options may well explain the disappearance of a large number of marine animals and plants, but the inhabitants of land under such conditions would have suffered less or the process of their extinction would have been extended over a longer period of time. But the most consistent version for many years was prolonged volcanic activity. The bulk of this activity occurred in the so-called Siberian Traps. This name was assigned to the lava traces, which have a stepped shape. Trappa can be translated from Swedish as steps. Until 1992, it was believed that intense eruptions had occurred in Siberia for about 5 million years, when a stream of hot magma, called a plume, rises to the surface, it begins to melt the Earth's crust. Something similar, only on a much smaller scale, can now be observed in the Pacific Ocean near the Hawaiian Islands. 250 million years ago, a sea of lava spilled across the expanses of the Siberian plain. Volcanoes released millions of tons of ash and various gases into the atmosphere. All this came back in the form of acid rain. The greenhouse effect has increased. The planet began to gradually warm up, and the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere began to rapidly fall. The worst thing in this case was for the marine inhabitants. An increase in water temperature led to the disappearance of a huge number of a wide variety of microorganisms. At that time, only anaerobic bacteria felt good. 
These organisms began to actively process sulfur, releasing hydrogen sulfide into the water and atmosphere, which further worsened the situation. But over time, continued warming of the water caused increased decomposition of bottom sediments containing methane. This further increased the greenhouse effect. Now, atmospheric oxygen was also spent on the oxidation of huge amounts of methane. The long-term extinction of almost all terrestrial fauna associated with another weather cataclysm for many years becoming the main version of events that happened at the end of the Permian period. But in 1992, a group of scientists from the University of Birmingham conducted research in one of the areas of the Italian Alps. Based on the samples taken there, an amazing discovery was made. Traces of the presence of living organisms ceased to be found in the rock layers over a very short period of time. Scientists have reported that the Permian extinction did not last millions, but at best tens of thousands of years. The whole theory of gradual increase in the greenhouse effect and the decrease in the amount of oxygen required serious revision. Again, Opinions were voiced about a collision with an unknown large space object. In Australia, a small amount of shock quartz was found, the sand grains of which bore traces of a strong impact. Isotopes of helium and argon with a special structure were discovered in the Antarctic region. It is believed that such compounds were characteristic of carbon-rich meteorites. These celestial bodies existed at the dawn of the solar system. Quite a lot of indirect evidence of the collision of the planet with an asteroid was found, but scientists were unable to find a crater. At this point, the search for the causes of the greatest extinction died down for some time, and all new evidence was based on existing findings and theoretical studies. In particular, some scientists have suggested that in addition to the volcanic activity itself, the burning of coal deposits in Siberia had a great influence on the process. Of course, the coal caught fire precisely under the influence of hot lava. But the combustion products that entered the atmosphere significantly complicated the already difficult situation of the planet. Periods of major volcanic activity closer to us always ended with a decrease in the average annual temperature. For example, scientists recorded a decrease in temperature after the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the 90s of the last century. A similar situation occurred after the eruptions of the Krakatoa and Tembora volcanoes in the 19th century. This caused crop failure throughout the European continent. In the 17th century, a volcano named Huanya Putina erupted in South America. At the same time, Russia experienced crop failures and severe famine for three years. And in the case of the extinction of the dinosaurs, volcanic activity caused by the fall of a meteorite led to the beginning of the next ice age. But at the end of the Permian period, this mechanism worked in reverse. By a strange coincidence, the temperature on Earth increased rather than fell. In the standard scenario of such cataclysms, everything looks quite simple. The curtain of smoke and volcanic dust became impenetrable to the sun's rays. The sun stopped heating the atmosphere and surface of the planet. The climate on Earth becomes much colder, sometimes for quite long periods of time. But about 251 million years ago, nature decided to take a different path. Some scientists believe that the cause of climate warming at the end of the Permian period was the destruction of the ozone layer. In fact, substances that are released during volcanic eruptions are capable of destroying atmospheric ozone molecules. True. This fact does not explain in any way why ultraviolet rays were not absorbed by sulfur dioxide. The amount of sulfuric acid elements released during the eruptions can protect the atmosphere and surface of the planet from exposure to sunlight. 
Another mystery associated with the Permian extinction contradicts the theory of the death of living organisms from the consequences of volcanic activity. The peak of this activity occurred in areas located in the northern hemisphere, but for some reason, the flora and fauna in the tropical zone of this hemisphere suffered much less than in a similar zone in the southern hemisphere. Interestingly, a large percentage of endangered species occur in the polar regions of the planet. According to scientists, during the disaster, the water at the poles became warmer by about 15 degrees Celsius, and in tropical zones, its temperature increased by 10 to 12 degrees. But given that the water at the poles was initially colder, the subpolar ocean waters still remained more attractive for marine animals. Similar processes are currently taking place on our planet. Global warming has led to marine animals gradually moving to colder waters, that is, in search for more comfortable living conditions. They move from the equator towards the poles. By evolutionary standards, this happens simply instantly. For many species, it took only decades to change habitats. Why didn't the animals of the late Permian period do the same? It is unlikely that evolutionary mechanisms have worked any differently for 250 million years. Some researchers claim that the warming and subsequent extinction was caused by a sharp increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But there is also evidence that about 55 million years ago, carbon dioxide levels were about the same level as during the Permian extinction. Even the average annual temperature was only one degree lower. Scientists call this period the Paleocene-Eocene Maximum. But back then, there was no global extinction. On the contrary, the number of living organisms and the diversity of species increased rapidly. So, was warming really the cause of the greatest extinction event in Earth's history? A large amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere causes intensive plant growth. Following this, the number of herbivores and the predators that eat them increases. There is also more living space for all animals. When there's an excess of carbon dioxide, there are no deserts. All of the above facts indicate that the climate warming that occurred at the end of the Permian period could not cause mass extinction but it still happened. In 2017, a group of scientists from Switzerland conducted a study of samples collected in China. Based on the results of these studies, they came to the conclusion that traces of the presence of life disappeared from the sediments about 10,000 years earlier than previously thought. It would seem that by the standards of earthly evolution, an extra 10,000 years cannot affect anything. But it is precisely during this time period that the level of the world's oceans decreased. But with strong warming, there should have been more water in it. Based on this data, scientists decided that the extinction occurred during a period of cooling, and warming caused by volcanic activity happened later. Perhaps the answer to the riddle about the causes of the Permian extinction was found at the beginning of the 21st century. Modern research methods have made it possible to discover a rather strange geological formation hidden under the ice of the planet's south pole. It has the shape of a crater with a diameter of about 480 kilometers. The middle part of this crater consists of very dense layers of rock. Such density could have arisen as a result of the fall of a large celestial body. To obtain a crater of such dimensions, the diameter of the asteroid had to at least be 20 kilometers. For comparison, it is worth saying that the diameter of the crater that appeared when the meteorite fell, which put an end to the era of the dinosaurs, is only 180 kilometers. The methods of analysis available to modern scientists say that the age of the Antarctic crater does not exceed 500 million years. But it is impossible to say for sure that it was this meteorite that caused the global catastrophe at the end of the Permian period. Now it is located under a layer of ice 
more than one kilometer thick. But the Siberian traps are located almost on the opposite side of the globe from the impact site. Maybe in the future, scientists will be able to somehow confirm or refute one of the versions. But for now, it is impossible to put a final point on the question of the causes of the Permian extinction. We thank the viewers who watched this video to the end. You can learn more about the other mass extinctions and the development of life during different periods of the planet's existence from previous videos. We also talk about environmental problems and the peculiarities of the relationship between man and nature throughout our existence.